Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, or second edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, crossword video earlier, of course. Um, in fact, I'm just thinking I should mention there may be a bonus video tomorrow morning as well. I, 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 I won't say too much about that, but keep an eye. If you're a subscriber, you should get a notification. Um, a little bonus video. Um, yeah, check it out. A anyway, anyway, that is by the by. What are we doing today? Well, post my return from holiday, um, I have had the pleasure of doing some incredible puzzles. I did James Sinclair's Fog of War on Wednesday, Fistum of Bells, um, what was it called? Copycat Confusion yesterday. And today I'm embarking on Mission Impossible by none other than the Dutch master, Ard van der Wetering. Um, Ard, of course, is responsible for many of our most popular videos and um, the puzzles that he's made. Um, people just love them. I think I think the most popular video has been viewed over nine million times, which is amazing when you think about Sudoku. Um, anyway, this puzzle has a very simple rule set. It's just arrows and there's an anti-night constraint and that is it. And <laughs> there's not a lot going on in that grid. Um, Anyway, we'll see if it really is Mission Impossible in a moment or two's time when I read you the rules. Um, but Ard's puzzles are always a delight. So if you do have some time, do try. And I, I, I would recommend that you, you spend some time in this puzzle's company because I, I've no doubt it will be brilliant. Um, now, what can I tell you before we kick off? Tomorrow, well, no, not tomorrow. It's it's Sunday, isn't it? Sud Sunday is the 1st of September, and that means we're, we have a new competition that we're about to uh, launch. A uh, Sudoku hunt themed on <laughs> sandwiches in the movies. <laughs> so lots of sandwich Sudokus, which, which I know many of you uh, will enjoy and have enjoyed in the past. Um, so that's coming 4 p.m. UK time on the 1st. Look out for that. Um, and I've got lots, I've still got lots of birthdays to catch up on post my holiday. I think this is the last day of birthday catching up on. Although a lot of these are actually for today as well. So let's, let's race through them. Um, Rachel, I think you're over in Nashville. I hope I'm right about that. Your friend Seth wrote to us um, to wish you a happy birthday, I think today, and said that he hopes you have fun this weekend with your brother rolling the dice. Does that mean you're a Dungeons and Dragons player? I'm not sure. Anyway, Rachel, many happy returns. I hope you have a great birthday. Um, Tony, Tony, I'm late with this one, aren't I? Your grandson, Stuart, AKA the peddling pianist. Um, some of you may know that name. Um, Tony, I know it was your birthday, I think a few days ago, and it was your first birthday as a great granddad. Um, so uh, I'm sorry I'm a bit late with the birthday wishes. In my defence, I will say that Stuart only wrote to me on the day <laughs> of your birthday, which isn't a lot of notice. But Tony, I hope you had a great one anyway, with chocolate cake, of course. Um, next, over there in Canada, Isabella. You turned 18, and I know this because your best friend Luke wrote to us, and I know that the two of you are at diff or you're, you're at universities in different provinces of Canada now, um, but he's very excited that you're home for your birthday this year. So Isabella, I hope you have an absolutely great one. Um, Emily, you've turned 23, and I know this because your boyfriend Louis wrote to us. Um, saying that you, you're sort of getting into the channel a bit and you will sometimes begrudgingly agree to watch a Cracking the Cryptic video rather than Netflix of an evening. Um, and Louis watches every day. Well, Emily, thank you for the, your forbearance. It's most welcome. And um, yeah, keep keep plugging away with these videos. They, they are addictive. They're addictive. Um, next, Davy. Davy, you've turned 30. I think this was a few days ago as well. Um, your wife, Laura, wrote to us and described you as being an incredible father to Sophia, who was born in January this year. And I think I've got a picture. Let me see if I've got it. There we go. There's Davy and Sophia watching Cracking the Cryptic. Isn't that nice? That's, that's such a cool photo. And look at her concentration. She's definitely interested. Um, so I think you're going to have a logic, logical whiz on your hands in no time at all. Um, Darren, it's your birthday tomorrow, but you're down in New Zealand. So I suspect when you see this message, it will be your birthday. Uh, you're turning 49. Uh, I hope you have a good birthday. 
Apparently, one of Darren's favourite puzzles on the channel was the Carl the Fog puzzle, which appeared a few weeks ago. If you haven't, if you haven't tried that puzzle, you must. It is absolutely jaw-dropping. Um, and just two more. Alexandros over in Athens. It's your name day today, so I think I think that's where you. It's Saint. It must be Saint Alexandros's day, and in Orthodox countries, I think that 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 is celebrated by people of the same name. I hope I'm right about that. And Alexandros, I don't know if it's an excuse to have chocolate cake, but it sounds like a good one to me. And then finally, Alora. I'm a bit late with this. It was your birthday on August the 26th over there in Florida. You turned 20, and I know this because your sister Gillian wrote to us um, and told us that you do the puzzles all the time. You're an awesome person, and there will be, or there was, chocolate cake. It's probably gone now. But anyway, Alora, many happy returns. And with all that said and done, let's have a look. Let's see if I can do Mission Impossible by the great Ard van der Vatering. These are the rules. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put the digits one to nine, once each in every row, every column and every three by three box. Um, digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So what you do is you put digits into those two squares you add them up and you write the result into that square so let's make that an eight. Oh, I tried to type eight and, and and wrote nine that's not very good so that could be one and seven uh, that that would actually work that would actually work I was worried I was going to bre breach the knight's move constraint but I don't seem to ever do that now cells separated by a single knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit so Look at that central square there. Now, if this was a chess knight, it could jump to all of these positions. And therefore, none of these green cells can contain whatever we put in the purple cell. Because they would be a knight's move apart, and that is expressly against the rules. And that is, believe it or not, all the rules. Maverick's buzzing past the window um, with a plom. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I mean, I'm going to tell you. Unless the knight's move is doing some sort of bizarre magic in this puzzle, then this puzzle is about set equivalence theory because there is simply not enough here. Two cell arrows are not, they're not beasts of, with much distinguishment. I mean, this, well, I mean, that can't be a three in this instance because we've got a three in the row. But, you know, in theory, the digits in the circles can be really quite small if you put a one and a two on the arrow. So, I mean, I mean, I don't even know if it's worth mentioning this, but if, if we look at this square, for example, and we think about the knight's move constraint, well, it's not doing a great deal. It's taking this square out. So whatever we put in the green square can't go here because of the knight's move constraint. And it can't go on its own arrow because otherwise it would be you know, the other digit would be a zero to make the maths work. But, I mean, it's in one of three positions up there. I don't, don't see how we're doing better than that. I oh, know it's not the seven, is it? No, is the answer. Yeah, so... And I don't think it's different in the central box. No, it's, the sa it's exactly the same principle. Basically, these little kinky two-cell arrows, you know, that they're always going to result in a similar pattern. The digit can't go on the arrow. It can't go in its own row or column, and it can't go there by knight's move, and therefore you get sort of this type thing going on. But that's not going to be enough to solve the puzzle. So I think what we're going to have to do, it looks like something like column two and column eight to me. And somehow build up a 
a set idea let's just have a go at those versus those and trying so you may say what are you doing that would be very if you've never seen set equivalence theory that is an incredibly reasonable question but even if you have you may say what you're doing that so what i'm doing is i'm trying to get um I'm trying to use as much information, as much of the, of the given information as I can in terms of the geometry, while at the same time, if I can, putting um, arrows in different colors to their circles. Now, what does all that mean? Well, l let me explain. So, so I'm seeing the blue squares. I can define exactly what these blue squares contain in total. I, I have no idea what the disposition of the digits is within the blue squares, but I do know that that's a complete column of the Sudoku, and this is a complete column of the Sudoku. So blue overall contains two sets of the digits 1 to 9. That must be true. Now, orange that's a complete box of the Sudoku, and that's a complete box of the Sudoku. So orange also contains two sets of the digits one to nine. So at this point, we can say that the contents of the blue set and the contents of the orange set are absolutely identical. So what would happen if I remove this cell from both colors? Well, let's do it. Quite clearly, because I had the same thing in both sets before I removed the same thing from both sets, what's left in orange and what's left in blue must still be the same. And I can do that for any cell that's got two colours into it. Uh, so, yeah, this is, this, is, this is interesting a little, isn't it? Because now what we can say is... We know that the contents of the orange cells is the same as the contents of the blue cells. Now, so if we sum up the orange, all the orange digits, we'll get a number X. And if we sum up all the numbers in the blue cells, we'll get that same number X. So if I was to remove those two cells from the blue set and this cell, which I know equals these, the sum of those two cells from the orange set, it's still true to say now it's not true well now it's not true to say that the digits in both sets are equal but it is true to say that the sums of the orange what remains in orange and the sum of what remains in blue must be equal and i can do that for these arrows all over the place look so no well now i've got eight cells in orange which are going to sum to it, and then more than 20. Um, 12 there, 1, 2, 4, 5 is the minimum I could put into orange in this box. 12 and 10, if this, these were 1, 2, 3, 4, um, which is 22. So these four blue cells add up to, that's not a restriction, they add up to at least 22. But in theory, these blue cells could actually be 8s and 9s, couldn't they? Which is 34, which is no good at all. So perhaps what we've got to do, hmm. you see what we could do, we know that we still know orange and blue have the same total, but I do know that this cell is the same, has the same total as those two cells. So if I remove this from orange and replace it with these two cells, um, orange and blue still have the same total. Why am I doing this? Well, what I'm tr what I'm trying to do is to get as much as I can in the same row because if I get because it's going to give me a more meaningful restriction. If I do the same here, take that out of orange and replace it with these two digits, you can see that now the central cell, this cell is actually in the orange set twice because when I remove this cell and this cell to replace it with the contents of their arrows, you can see this cell is in the orange set twice by dint of doing that and the reason this is interesting is now look at orange the, the, these cells here are seven different numbers so they add up to at least 28 but that one's counted twice so that's 29 even in, in the sense that even if that's a one which is the very least it could be the minimum that the orange cells in row five add to now is 29 
Now, if those were both ones, that would give us 31. So the minimum sum of blue now is 31, and 31 is a lot more than 22. It's much closer to the max. So I've managed, I have actually managed to get this down a bit. I've got it down to, there's three degrees of freedom. 31 is the minimum orange. And this digit can't be that big then. Um, how big could it be? If it was three. So if these cells here were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With a th so that's 28's worth of digits plus a three. I oh, don't know, that would work. Four. Four is the maximum for this digit because it if it if it's if it's four and these are and we put eight and nine into those squares so the remainder of row five sums to twenty eight. Um, I know that for a variety of reasons. The triangle number for seven is twenty eight, but you could also do it using a secret that I share with only my very favourite people. And the secret, of course, is that a whole row of Sudoku um, sums to forty five. And therefore, if I knock 17, 8, and 9 out of 45, I get 28. Um, then this, but this is double counted in orange. So if that's 4, we get to 32. These could be double 1, and then I could have 8, 9 pairs into these squares. But this cannot be more than 4, is what we've now learned, because I can't make the blue squares more than 8 and 9s, can I? So... Um, hmm. So I know I know there is a repeated digit now in blue because if if there was no repeat in blue, the maximum digits would be six, seven, eight, and nine, and that's only thirty. But I know that the minimum sum of orange is thirty-one, and that's with a one here and ones in these positions. So there's a repeated digit in blue or two repeated digits in blue if it's eight and nine. If it's, ah. It might not be possible for it to be eights and nines actually. Because, okay. I haven't worked this out yet, but what I'm wondering is, if these were an 8-9 pair, then in row 5, don't I have to put 8 and 9 into orange? And therefore, orange can't be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, because, it, because by Sudoku, it must have 8 and 9 in orange. So, the minimum orange could be in the row 5 would be 8, 9, and then one, two, three, four, and five, which is 15. So 15 and 17 is 32. No, ah, that doesn't work. Only just, but it doesn't work. So if we have an eight, nine pair here, what I'm saying then is that because eight and nine in row five have to be in orange, let's say they were in the wings of orange, they were in those squares. And then I made these squares the minimum I possibly could from what's left. These could add up to, these could be one, two, three, four, and five. And let's put one in the double counted cell. Well, then I've got eight, nine here, plus 15, plus one is 16, plus the eight, nine is 30. Uh, oh, hang on. Have I done my maths wrong? No, I haven't done it wrong. I've got 16 and 17 is 33, plus double one, which is the minimum I could put there, is 35. And that is one more than it's ever possible to put into, bl into blue. So, these, so we are closing the gap. <laughs> I've managed to close it now to, um, well, what have we now got? We've got a maximum of 33 in blue and a minimum of 31 in orange. So it's very close to being constrained. But also, aren't... 
because we know there has to be a repeated digit in blue. So let's just make that digit A for a moment. Then we, because there must be a repeat, and let's say A is the repeated digit. Well, then we know that would be A, don't we? And that's without loss of generality. You know, you could make this the repeated digit, but then that would be the repeated digit as well. So what, what I'm noticing is that A is always appearing in orange somewhere in this row. Let's just put it there. And the reason, the reason I'm interested in that is that from a set perspective, I can therefore cancel out the repeated digit. You know, for example, if, if this was the repeated digit, I could cancel it with that square. Um, so we're going to be left with three digits in blue. Yeah, but now I've got a different total here because I've I've cancelled A out from wherever it appeared in row five. I've got now I've now got twenty one, which is the triangular number of six. If I populate these digits with the least possible thing I could, I would get twenty one plus one is twenty two plus another 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 one double one here is twenty four. So how am I? that's interesting. So if I could prove, and I haven't done this, and I'm not sure whether I can, but if I could prove that blue, that it's not possible to have two repeats in blue, if that was impossible, then I would know that the non-repeating digits no mm, what would i know i would know that there must be a 789 triple in blue plus a repeated digit i think mm, let me just think about this okay go, 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 going back to this so let's say a let's say there is a repeated digit in blue so, so there's two repeated digits. So, so A repeats and B repeats. Then we know in row five, A and B have to be in orange. Let's just say they're there and there. A and B. Well, then it's totally legitimate. Because it doesn't matter where A and B go. It's totally legitimate to cancel A's and B's from the set like that, isn't it? And you get left with a situation where the minimum sum of the remaining cells in orange is now, if these were 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and that was a 1, you'd have 16, 17, 18. But you can't make these add up to 18, and yet they would be in the same column. They might not be here. But it would be somewhere because they're double repeating. You can't do it. That doesn't work. Let me. I'm just going to just make sure I agree with that logic. Yeah, because even if I, even if I, even if I cancelled out a different B, so I cancelled this B out, that B would remain, and these two digits are in the same row. And they can't both be nine. It doesn't work. That is absolutely ridiculous. Right. So I'm going to go right back now to where I was thinking before. So I think I've now proved that there is not, it is not possible for there to be a double repeater in blue. Therefore, there is only one repeating digit, which in my example here is A. These two digits would have to be B and C. Now, the interesting thing about this, though, is now we can see that A does reside in, in orange somewhere. We don't know where it is, but let's, let's say it's that one. We therefore... Uh, it's legitimate to cancel one of the A's out with one of the A's on the perimeter 
without loss of generality, we get left with six digits in row five, including a repeat, which is a minimum of one, two, three, four, five, and six plus one. So that's 22, 23, 24. So it, it's not possible for these two, those two squares there that I've just highlighted, they can't be anything other than ones. This can't be anything other than one because, because there are three independent digits, A, B, and C. And they, because they are all different, the maximum they can ever add up to is 24. And the minimum I can make the remaining orange squares add up to is 24. That's <laughs> right. So that is very interesting. But, well, that's going to give me digits. That's going to give me digits. So it gives me, it gives me three ones in the grid, exactly like that. That must be true. It means these digits... It means the three different digits are seven, eight, and nine. And because we know orange has a minimum sum of 31, the other digit that's in blue, that's not for the seven, eight, nine triple adding up to 24 is at least a seven. Um, so these digits are from seven, eight, and nine. This is absolutely fascinating. I do not, well, I think I must be going about it something like what Ard's intended, because it must be set based. There's no, you ha this is one of these puzzles where you basically have to use almost all of the given information to do anything. You have to sort of combine it because there's a whole meta thing going on. And I can't believe there is any other way well, there might be a more elegant way of seeing the conclusions than, I've, than I'm coming up with. But it's going to be something like this that Ard has in mind for how, how one is meant to go about solving it. So, oh, so now I know that the repeated digit, but I don't know where the repeated digit goes, is in orange in the row. And the repeated digit is either seven, eight, or nine. My phone's going nuts. Um, but then I know, I know the orange. So I've got seven digits in orange in row five. And I know that the one, one of those seven is the repeated digit, which is a seven, eight or a nine. The others have to be specifically the digits one, two, three, four, five and six in order to keep the total of orange down to 24. So, right. So what that means is that these two squares are from seven, eight and nine. And that gives me a triple in column eight and a triple in column two. <laughs> um, So, well, that's not, oh, that's, I've done it. I've done it. I've got a digit, right? I've got, well, I've got a different digit seven by knight's move. I haven't used knight's move so far. Have I? I've not for all that set stuff. I've not used knight's moves, but this digit can't be seven by knight's move. And that can't be seven by, um, simple Sudoku. So that I've got an eight, nine pair and I've got a seven up here, which means that's not a seven. So, hmm. well, that doesn't prove anything about this digit, though. Although it could be seven, and seven could be the repeater. Uh, So, oh dear, sorry, I'm not seeing it now. Uh, <laughs> if, uh, how do we do this then? So what, 
don't know is the answer. So there's an awful lot of arrowage in these columns that has to that can't have a digit higher than six on it. I'm sorry. I um. That digit can't be two because that would make that three and it can't be three by knight's move. So this is at least a four. But if it was a four, this would be a five and that doesn't work by Sudoku. So it's at least it's not a five by Sudoku. So that digit is at least a six. <laughs> I mean, that that is that is phenomenally strange. So this digit is at least a seven. Oh, I nearly I pressed the wrong button there. Um, so this digit is six, seven, or eight, and by Sudoku, so that digit it can't go in those squares by the knight's move, it's not equal to one, and it can't go on its own arrow circle because it's one different from whatever goes in the circle, so it is in one of those two squares and it's equal to six seven or eight mm. I don't know maybe that's fine okay um Apologies if I'm missing something obvious here. I think I might well be actually because it feels like I've I've done the hard bit. Getting that did that getting that seven was very exciting. Um is it something to do with Oh Yes, where's seven in this box? It's in one of those two places. So if that's seven, this isn't seven and this isn't seven. So that would be an eight, nine pair. But all the both of the, ah, that might be it. Right, right. I'm not sure if this is correct, so I'm just going to play it out. But when I was just looking at this, I didn't think this could be seven because of what it does to this arrow. It knocks seven out of here, which forces this to be odd. And it can't be seven itself, so it would have to be nine. So we, what we'd have is a nine here and an eight here. And now this square seems to be broken to me because it sees nine and it sees eight. So in fact, this is seven, which means that is six. Now, <laughs> what does that mean? Well, okay, well, that means six is in one of those two. So six is in a circle. So if that, if this is six, this can't be a one five pair. So it would have to be a two four pair. Um... 7 is in one of those squares. I mean, I might I might actually pencil mark that. That's 7. 7 would be in one of these squares. If that's 6, this 3 I don't think is doing quite the work it needs to, is it? Um, so... Yeah. What's that digit then? It can't this can't be a one two pair adding to three. It can't be a one three pair because of this, so it doesn't add up to four. Can it be five? If it's five, this is a one four pair. That might be possible. Um, if it's six, 
six. Then it's got two options of bother. Okay, forget that. That doesn't seem to be a very clever way of approaching it. Oh dear. <laughs> um, I was going quite well for a few minutes and now I don't know what to do. How do we do this? Am I meant... I don't actually have a... What on earth am I meant to do now? Is it something to do with... Ah, ah, here's a point that I haven't noticed. This six can't go there in column two. So there's a six on an arrow. I'm sort of surprised by that. Because wherever that six goes, it's in one of the all of the, it's, I mean, it's got an awful lot of options, but wherever it goes, it can't partner up with a three, can it? So it's going to partner up with a one or a two. And a, well, yeah, OK, it's going to partner up with a two, actually, because it can't partner up with a one. Because if it partnered up with, if the six, say the six was down here and it partnered up with a one, it would put a seven in its circle. And we can't, we can't have a seven in either arrow circle. This is unbelievable. So actually, one, one this is, a, oh, this is it. So this is a six, eight pair. Because one of the arrows can't be 6-3. Whichever arrow has a 6 on it can't be 6-1. We've just shown that. It can't be 6-3 by Sudoku. So it is 6-2 adding to 8, which means these two squares are a 6-8 pair. And the middle digit is a 9, and that's not a 9. And now... Well, now what does that mean? So that means that... Yeah... This is very interesting. So I'm going to get this digit. The way I... Oh, actually, I'm going to get that digit. Maybe that's more important. <laughs> I'm going to get that digit and that digit. But, but what I've noticed is that because one of these is a 6, op, uh, on the other side, what, one of these arrows is a 6-2 arrow. So the arrow that's a 6 can't be a 2-4 arrow because the 2 has gone from the column on the 8 arrow. So that, yeah, this is it. So the six arrow has to be a one five arrow, and that can't be here because this can't be one five by this given digit. This is, this is Ard at his spectacularly most clever. So you have to go, this has to be the eight, this is two six, this is now one five because it can't use a two, and that digit is the digit we earn from all this, and that digit is a four. That means these two digits are a two and a five, Ah, it doesn't get me that one. Oh, Bobbin's, Bobbin's face. You Is this... Oh, no, that's good. It's still good. That can't be two, because then you couldn't put a two in this box anywhere, because of the knight's move constraint. So that's six. That's two. This can't be five for the same reason. So that's one, and that's five. And I get the whole of this column done. This five is... Looking at that, that's got to be there. I've done the whole of box four and the whole of column two. And I'm actually, <laughs> I'm fairly astonished by that. So that's six there in one of these three by Sudoku. Uh, no. Um, six is in one of those two by Sudoku. I, I still don't know. Well, I now know the repeated digit is not nine, actually. Because the repeated digit must be seven or eight. Um. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm sure this is now, if not obvious, I'm sure there's something we can do here. That's got, there's a one down here by Sudoku. I wonder if it's row th row five now. Let's just check what we've got in the gap cells. We've got three, four, seven, and eight. But oh, 
I don't know what that means. Um, whatever that digit is. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, let's just work out what the what the options are for this square. That can't be ah ah. This can't be seven because one plus seven is eight, and that would clash. So that that's probably interesting. So seven is in this domino. Seven is in one of those three squares. If this is eight, this is nine. If this is three, oh, this can't be three. If that's three, this is four, and that clashes. If this is four, this is five. Now, does that clash? I'm not sure. Um, I mean, that digit, whatever it is, goes in one of those two squares in box uh, in box five because it can't go here because of the knight's move and it can't go on its own arrow and it's not equal to six actually so the six has moved over to this domino and this is five or nine that's four or eight so there's definitely three and seven in these squares which <laughs> which might be important that's definitely not three um, oh bobbins that, that uh, that's annoying we got very close there to figuring some stuff out so what do we do now <laughs> if how did we resolve the left hand side? The way we resolved the left hand side was that we worked out that we worked out that digit had to go on an arrow. Now here the equivalent digit is there but if that's an 8 it could go in one of the blue cells couldn't it? So that seems less important. Um, oh, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, let me think. There must be some other way of approaching this then. Um, how long have I had? Four, 42 minutes. Golly. That has flown past. Is it something to do with... Um, Oh, that's an interesting thought. What happens if those are big? That doesn't work. Ah, okay, here is a thought. Uh, I'm not really sure where this thought is going yet, but I think one of these circles must be on the other one's arrow. What do I mean by that? Let me just show you. If, if I make that red for a moment and we ask where the red digit goes in this column, then it can't go in its own box, can it? It can't go on its own arrow. And therefore it could go on, on its friend's arrow down here and make this definitively bigger than than red which is already the sum of two different digits or or it goes in one of the blue cells now let's let's do the same for this square actually let's make that a better color um let's make it oh i don't know yellow um the same is true for this square but what i noticed is if the if all three of these were high by high i mean um sevens eights and nines to allow for the possibility that both of these squares are wing cells rather than on the other one's arrow if this was a seven eight nine triple here what happens the problem with that is that this is a three four pair 
and that's an 8 then, and that's a 9, and that's impossible. It can't have this being a 9 if this is a 7, 8, 9 triple. So these are not capable of being huge numbers. They're, they're, at least they can't both be huge numbers, which means that one of them is not, at least one of them is not 7, 8 or 9, and therefore cannot go in a blue square. And therefore, where does it go? Let's say it was this one that was lower than 7, 8 or a 9. In the column, it has to go on its friend's arrow. Well, okay. So one of these is 7, 8 or 9 then. They can't both be low. Because if they're both lower, then that feels impossible to me. I think there's an easier way of seeing this. I'm just not seeing it quite. Is it where does 9 go in box 6? Is that the question I should be asking? I mean, we can see, because this is 7 or 8, one of these is 9, which means one of, and those can't be 9. So 9 is in one of those three squares. So that can't be 9. Oh, God, it's really interesting, actually. Where's 9 in the middle box now? Well, this 9 knocks out those squares. That can't be 9, because then you can't put 9 there by knight's move or in either of those two squares. So 9 couldn't go in box 6 anywhere. So 9 in the middle box is in one of those three positions. But that might not be the point that Ard is trying to lead me to. I know that it's not possible that both of these are big. So one of them is going on the other's arrow. And the sum Is there some way that we can lock that down then? Oh, I don't know. Neither of these can be three. If one of them was a four, what is going on with my phone? Sorry about that. I'm actually going to, I want to sort of drop it in a bucket of water. Um, if one of these was four, that would be a four. That would be a five. So one of these would be nine. So one of these arrows would be four, five. <laughs> it's really powerful, isn't it? Is that somehow what I meant to deduce here? If this is eight, this is nine. This is 8. 8 takes comes out of all of these squares. 8 would be in one of those squares. This would be a 7. This would be a 9. 8 couldn't go on its friend's arrow. So 8 would be in this wing cell here. And this or the other arrow would have to go on the eight arrow. And this would be a seven, so it couldn't it would have to be a two six or a three five. Oh, I'm close to, I'm close to understanding this and just failing slightly. Okay. Okay, is it to do with this? digit then maybe I've maybe this is the digit I've got to come back to maybe that's the digit that we should think about harder because that digit look it's not there it's not equal to itself so it is in one of the, one of the circles so the gray digit is in one of those squares so let's get rid of red and get rid of yellow now because they haven't really served a purpose. Now, 
Is it actually possible that this is a four? I don't know. It just feels more comp. It feels tricky for me that one of these arrows is one three. But maybe that's just me being. being slow. In fact, that might work because if this was four, this would be five. Five would be on an arrow. Four could, and one of these would be nine, and that would work. Yeah, that feel. I, I think this might be a four. You know, that's where I'm coming to. So, it, what? How does it work the other way round? If this is eight, my gut instinct is this breaks, but I haven't worked out why. This would be seven. Let's just say that top one is eight. Now, can we understand why there's a problem? It would, it would actually be the top one because of Sudoku. This would be seven. This would be nine. It, actually, it's incredibly powerful. <laughs> Even if this, is, if this turns out to be the right way to look at it, it's incredibly powerful. So... This would be a 3-4 pair in this world. This would be an 8. This digit would go on this arrow. So what's that digit? Is that somehow... Is that somehow constrained in a way I can't understand? Oh, I don't know. can't see it. No, I don't know. Certainly I'm not seeing it instantly anyway, am I? So it's not, maybe it's not this digit then. But, well, what digit is it then? I don't know. Let's try, let's try a simple Sudoku. Maybe that's what we're missing. That digit, actually, whatever that digit is, it, it has a friend in one of those two cells. So actually, this is never the grey digit. Oh, that's, well, that's a, that's a breakthrough. So by Sudoku, this digit is there. Ah, so this is never the nine. Pregnant pause while I try and work out what that means. So the nine is in one of these squares. Oh, come on, Simon. What's this? What's this telling us? All right. Well, it's telling us these are a uh, three, four, seven, eight quadruple in box six. So the other cells that we've got left to place are two, five, six, and nine. So I'm just gonna label them in the hope it, oh, I didn't want to label them like that. I want to put them in the middle of the boxes. So two, five, six, nine. And we know this isn't six. We know that's not a two, don't we? Because we can't put double one on this arrow. Right, but do we actually get anything more than that? So this is five, six, or nine. And if this was eight, it would go there. So this would have to go. Still not getting it, I don't think. Um, so, t okay, okay, here's a small point. Two is vertical in column eight. Does that help us with something? So if this was a four, oh, you can't put one on the arrow. Ah, oh, that's it. 
Oh, that's beautiful. Right. This is not, I don't think this is terribly easy, but um, th this can't be a four. Because if it is a four, the only way of filling this arrow is with a one, three pair. And the knight's move prevents this being a one. And that can't, this one sees that square. So this is eight. This is eight. I don't know what that's going to do yet, but I feel like that's a breakthrough. This is now seven. Okay, so we can do some more thingies. I've got a three, four pair here. Um, now you can see... Or am I wrong about this? Well, no, that's that's a nine by Sudoku. That's an eight by Sudoku. So the nine is now somewhere. Oh, here's an interesting point. This arrow is not one seven because of Sudoku. So it is either two and six or three and five. Now. Whatever it is, there is a floating 2-5 pair in this sequence. This is beautiful. But the reason, imagine this is a 2, then this can't be 2-6, so it would include 5. And if this is a 5, this can't be 3-5, so it would include 2. So 2 and 5 are in those three squares, and that square is a 6, which actually resolves that arrow. It bounces back up there. So this is 3-5, this is 2. So this is not 6. Um, I <laughs> don't know what this means yet, but it's quite exciting. That's not seven. So seven is placed. Look, seven is there. Okay. This arrow is a nine now. So that's what resolves this, this jiggery pokery. And this is a one, four pair because it can't be a two, three pair. And this can't be four, or you couldn't put four into box six. So this is one, this is four. Four is in one of those squares. Four is in one of these squares. Not there because of the knight's move. I get a four into box thingy thingy, technical term. Um, four is in one of those squares. There could be all sorts of knight's move stuff going on here. This can't be three, because it would rule a three out. So that's five, that's three. 5 is in one of these two squares in box 2. Now, now, what do we do with this new knowledge? 8 is in one of those squares. There's probably an awful lot of Sudoku to be done now. Um, where, more well, nearly, <laughs> nearly, where's 9 in row 7? It's not in those squares, so it's in one of two places, uh, which is not helpful. Bother. Um, no, my other thought there was not worth not worth the neurons it was written on. Um, okay, so therefore. Okay, that loses its grey. I think we can lose the grey now. I don't think it really, it's really done its job. So the repeated digit in blue turned out to be eight in the end. But, and this is green. Oh, yeah, okay, that sees that cell. Let's, so is the question, where does nine go in box five? Is that actually resolved then? It is, like, it has to go there. Okay, that's good. So that's a nine. That's a green nine. Let's label up our green nines in case it leads to some sort of propitious effect. Let's give that a bit of a green nine. Oh, bother. Uh, what about green nine down here? Yeah, well, okay. It's in one of those two squares. No, this isn't going to be enough, is it? Um, shall we okay these are a two three pair let's do that and see if that's resolved double click our twos in case one of them reaches in double click our threes in case one oh no ah that's bad okay what are those four and five there the five reaches in there so this is five and this is four there's quite a lot 
of um, Knight's Move stuff going on now, isn't there? Right, so one is a little bit restricted, but not restricted enough in box two. Have we... Mm, I think it's been... I think I have reduced the puzzle now to what I'll say straightforward Knight's Move Sudoku, <laughs> uh, whatever that means. Eight is in one of those squares. No, that's no use. Eight is in one of these. Yeah, maybe... Hmm. I think I'm going to lose the orange now. I know this might be controversial. I'm going to lose the purple. And I'm going to lose the blue. And in the hope that if I track digits more carefully, I might be able to deduce things of some value. Um... Eight is in one of these two squares. Nine is in one of those three squares. Oh, this, no, this is not doing it, is it? Can we do... Is there some way that we can... This is bizarre, actually. It's, it's suddenly become incredibly difficult. Can I resolve this three, four pair here? Or this 2-3 pair. I think I've already looked at that. Okay, let's have a think about row 7 then. 2, 3, 8, 9. Ah, that's a 2 or a 3. Now, what does that see? I don't know. This digit... It definitely sees 8. Now, can I make it see 9 somehow? That would be very helpful. Does it see two or three? I mean, it sees that digit. Oh, it's, uh, I mean, these if these were a two, three pair, then I could rule those out of that square. But they could be a two, four pair, probably. Ah. Yeah, I know. In fact, I'll change tack. This can't be two or three because of these two squares. They see this square because of the knight's move constraint. So that is just a straightforward nine. <laughs> straightforward in inverted commas. Um, so nine is in one of those squares. All right, so maybe I do have to come back to this row. We've got two, three and eight to place. Now, what does that see? It sees two. Oh, well, it's the same. No, it's the same point, isn't it? This has to be eight because it can't be two or three. Sorry, that's very obvious. So that's eight. Right, that's good. So this is eight using our earlier pencil marks. That can't be eight. So this is eight. Aha. OK, that's eight. This is a two, three pair. <laughs> so, so there's some probably colouring twos and threes at some point is something we'll have to think, think about. Five, six, seven into these squares. Let's label that and see what we can do. Six comes out of this square. So six is in the bottom row. So six is in one of these two squares. Um, is that good? <laughs> <laughs> Let's double click sixes. No, it's not. Oh, woe is me. I mean, that digit is in one of those. Uh, okay, so there's sort of a weird floating five, six, seven triple I'm seeing in the sense that this digit here is in one of those two squares in box eight. It can't be here. So those squares form a five, six, seven triple, which means the rest of the row is only made up of 1s, 2s, 3s and 4s. So I'm actually going to label that and see what we can get rid of. That's clearly not 4 or 1. So this is a 2 or a 3, which is... That seems to be the most common thing we keep being left with. This digit is not 2. That digit is not 2 or 1. That's a 3 or a 4 in the corner. Botheration. Uh, oh no, that's not doing it. 2 is in one of those two squares. 
uh, six can't go in those squares in row three. Can we do any better than that? Six is in one of those three. I don't think it's good enough, though I could be wrong. Three is a bit restricted in box thingy thingy. Um, six. can't do it oh dear 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 I'm sorry if you if you're all seeing the next step I would I'm sure I'm sure many of you are but I don't I'm not finding this very easy what about column one then two three six no no two three four nine so that's three or nine only is there some way we can improve upon that it's really constrained See that's two, four, or nine. Don't I don't really want to pencil mark the puzzle to absolute death. This is one, three, four, or nine, but it's not four because of this. Is there some way we can do better? I just don't think there is. Obviously, if they knew what that digit was, the world would be an easier place to manage. Okay, let's try column five, two, three, five, six. Two, three, five, six. Is that? I, that's not two. Or three. Right. This is five or six. Okay. But that digit, whatever it is, has to fi fi find a home in this box, doesn't it? And it can't be in these two squares because if it's there, the knight's move rules it out of both of them. So it lives in the corner. That means seven is now vertical in this, these two positions. Which, mean, which means I get a 7, actually, uh, by Sudoku, then, in box 3. 7 is in one of these. That 7 takes care of that one. So 7 is in one of 2 now. Now, <laughs> that might be good. Uh, so, okay. Oh, no, no. Well, where is 7 in box 8? It is in one of those squares, but it could be the purple digit. So that might not be a... A revealing thing we've just learned. Um, okay. Wow. Maybe. Um, this sounded like the start of an Oasis song. Oasis in the in the in the news a lot at the moment. One two four six nine. Let's try row two. One two four six nine. Can we see anything clever going on there? Four is mildly restricted. Maybe okay. Maybe I do have to really pay attention to the pencil marking then. Okay, so I will pencil mark row two. So one, two, four, six, nine. One can't be two. Can't be four. Six, nine. Can we get rid of any other digit? Nine apparently. Oh yeah, we can get rid of nine. So this is only one or six. Right. That's weird. That is very strange. Okay. How can we improve upon that? I hear you say very fairly. I don't know is the answer. Um, what about... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, Let's double click digits and see if we... Oh, five is looking at that one. Given digit as usual, being naughty. So that's got to be a six then. Right, that puts six in the corner and I get a five, seven pair here. That was very worthwhile. So six, oh no. Six is going to be in one of those squares. That's horrific. Um, but this being five and seven, does that help with anything? Gosh, it's not really. 
Can I improve upon the six pencil mark here? Can I do anything with this? This is unbelievable. Gosh. Um, I don't know what to do. That digit is not... Oh, no, it's nothing. It doesn't work. Wow, Ard. You've con this is, I think this is a very hard puzzle. Because even to get to this point, I had to do some fairly... Um, interesting jiggery pokery to know. Well, okay, let's label these squares. These are two, three, and four. Ah, where's five in this column? That's a good question. It has to be there. Okay. So this is a two or a three. Now, which is it? Can we see how to get to that digit? Ah, it's still not resolved. What does this five do? Nothing. Oh, no, no, no. It must do something. I've got far too many fives in the grid now. Five is oh no it doesn't. I've got this sort of horrible pattern of fives in the bottom of the bottom of columns sixes and seven that doesn't look like it wants to be resolved. Six now is in one of those three squares. Ah, okay, that's mildly interesting. Ah, I can get the six in box one. This is a pattern that comes up sometimes in night's move puzzles. Look at this arrangement. So I know that the six is either in these three squares of box two and either in these three squares of box three. So my question for you is, is it possible that neither of these two squares, neither of those two contains a six? And the answer is no, because if the six sixes were disposed in only these blue squares and say this was a six and then this was a six, obviously these see each other by night's move. That cannot be the case, can it? So in fact, there now must be a six in one of those squares, which looks at that six and means that's a six. I mean, it's bonkers. So now there's a, no sixes here. Now, what does the, what's that done? You see, now we've got oh, we've got the same thing with sixes we have with fives. We've got sort of this funny pattern here that's left over. Okay, but now maybe this box is better. Two, three, four, and nine. So these are from three, four, and nine. Now, can we do anything with that? That's not three. What about that one? That's not nine. So this has come right down. This is three or four. And these are, right, what are these? Two, th two three, four, and nine. But can we do anything better? The three comes out of this one. So, hmm, oh, that's annoying. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> so three is in one of those squares in box one. It knocks three out of this square, doesn't it? Because three here would stop you being able to put a three in box one. Yeah, that's great. Wow. Wow. Okay. So what I noticed is this can't be a three because of where I've got threes in box, box one. They're in one of those two. So if this was three, I couldn't put three here and I couldn't put three here because of the night's move. So this is not a three in box two. This three knocks out those and by night's move knocks out those. So there is now a three in box. Oh, in fact, I know where it is. It's exactly here by night's move. That is a three. So that's a two. Right. That's probably going to be very helpful, he says, hoping. That's four. That's nine. That's two. Oh, please. That is. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. Losing its religion. Wow. I mean, that. if that's what we had to do to solve it, that's very difficult. That's now nine. That's four in the corner. So we take nine out of here and four out of here. We get left predictably enough with a one, three pair. It's probably resolve, resolving something. What about, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, let's try, yeah, yes. Four is now here in box two. That's good. So four. 
is in one of two places in box three. This is a 1-6 pair in row thingy thingy. Which must be resolved, surely. That's not a 6, I'm noticing. Um, okay. Um, wow. I mean, this is a brilliant puzzle, but my goodness me, I'm struggling with it. How long have I had? It's going to be as long as the Fistimafel puzzle yesterday. Okay, so, all right, let's take stock. We're still in the game. We're still fighting. What can we do? What, where, where's the natural place to look for our next digit? Um, I don't know. I think, I think I might look at row three or row one, actually. One, two, four, nine. Yeah, well, let's do it. Let's pencil mark it to within an inch of its life and see what we can get rid of. We can get rid of one from this square. We can get rid of a nine from this square. We can get rid of a four from this square and an, actually and a nine. So that's come down. That's one or two. And that can't be four. Now, is there anything reaching in here by knight's move from here? I don't think there is. Oh no, no, that was that was a total waste of time, I fear. Um, all right, let's try row three then, two, six, seven, nine. So let's again, fully pencil mark and be diligent. Now those can't be seven, that can't be nine. Can we get rid well, we only have to get rid of one more digit here, two or six. What about that one? It's going to be some silly knight's move <laughs> that's going to give it to us. Um, yeah, that one's horrible. Oh, it can't be nine, I suppose, because of this one. What about that? Is there some reason? Oh, that can't be two because of this or six because of that. Okay, so that's come right down. Seven or nine. Can we... Surely that's seeing either seven or nine, is it, by knight's move? Um, or not, as the case may be. One, two, three, seven, nine in this column. Oh, it's nearly very difficult to put two into this column. It's only got two possible positions. Okay, I'm go I am going to look at this column. One, two, well, th neither of these can be two, so effectively we can eliminate that. One, three, seven, and nine. We can eliminate nine. So these are from one, three, and seven only. Right, surely I can do... No, that can't be seven. There we go. One, three pair here out of nowhere. So, ah, that can't be a three because that's going to knock threes out of both of these squares. So this is a two. This is a three. Here we go again. <laughs> um... This is so hard one. Um, now, come on. Come on, Simon. What does that mean? It doesn't reach in anywhere. No, this is five or seven by Sudoku. But that's C7. Right, okay. That's good. So seven has to be here. That has to be five. That has to be five. Um, and this is one or seven. But do I know which? Of course I don't. Have I? No, I haven't. I was saying, have I done all the sevens? No. <laughs> um, what? Well, hang on. No, don't be unkind. That must have done more than I just learned. I got this digit. Why does it not help me? Oh, I don't know. Wow. Wow. This is really difficult. Um, okay. So we're going to have to think of something else now. I don't know what that's going to be, but... 
but we will persevere. We have to solve it. I especially have to solve it now. I mean, it's such a remarkable puzzle. And actually, to be fair to Ard, I don't blame him at all. If this back end is difficult and was intended to be difficult, I suspect it's because any extra digit you give would break the beauty of the break-in. And I can totally understand why Ard wanted to pers sort of preserve what he achieved there. So um, now all I've got to do, all he had to do was to have a sensible thought. Now, where is that thought coming from? So two and six are up here. Ah, that's that cell, Caesar two by knight's move. So that might be it. So this has come down to six. Uh, I've got a one six seven pair. So two in that column goes there. So two. Yeah, that two sees that square. So that becomes six. That becomes one. That becomes six. Um, therefore, this is seven. Right. Here we go. Right. One, three, one, three, seven, nine, one, four, nine, two four three three two my goodness me okay that was brutal yes solve counter two wow okay so that's a tester that's a tester and me <laughs> um that was that was very difficult indeed especially i wonder what i wonder if there was see i worry with that that digit looking in there maybe that i could have done a lot of things more quickly than i did but there was some fascinating stuff like working out this square couldn't be a three seemed important at the time and the break-in is beautiful the idea that forces these to all be high digits giving me a seven here from the given from the set wow what a puzzle that was nearly mission impossible that was really difficult <laughs> forgive me forgive me for not being cleverer um but let's see some serious praise in the comments for the magnificent hard van der Vatering who again bamboozles us with just utter utter brilliance thank you so much for watching we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic